Well, I'm joined now by the Energy and Climate Change Minister, Greg Barker. Greg Barker, let's deal with the nitty-gritty of the energy bill freeze So um, first. And you can admit now, can't you, that you've finally come round to Ed Miliband's point of view? Absolutely not. I think today we saw the collapse of uh, Labour's energy freeze con. What well, hang on a sec. The companies have taken it up and run with yeah, it. Yeah, but Cathy, you're assuming that we haven't been working hard for a price, not just a price freeze, but to reduce energy bills. All politicians on both sides of the, of the House want the same thing. We want a better deal for consumers. But you only but Ed, did Ed, that Ed, after Ed Miliband no, proposed no, no. it. He set the agenda and you then followed it. No, no, no. We, all, all politicians are listening to the same people, to consumers, and they're saying they're worried about the cost of living. The difference is Ed proposed a return to the 1970s, a prices and incomes policy, effectively, which would have devastated investment in the energy sector. We propose to cut costs of government policy and to give more choice, more competition and a more competitive market. And it's that, those forces, cutting costs and a more competitive market, lots more people switching, that is forcing companies like uh, Scottish and Southern that we've seen today to offer a better deal and to come forward and freeze. But that's very okay. different to David a heavy-handed Okay. Uh, intervention. David Cameron said when Ed Miliband came out with his proposals that it was intellectually incoherent, it was a price con, you've just repeated that, but he's, he, he proposed it, the company's now following no. it. Ed Miliband was proposing legislation. Ed Miliband was proposing that government start running companies and that government legislate. That's not what's happened today. What's okay. happened, we've seen a company come forward with a good offer as a result of action that the coalition has taken. It shows that our long-term economic plan is actually working. Okay. And presumably you hope the other big six energy Absolutely. companies will and follow, follow And there'll be a range of different uh, offers and customers can switch more and more easily and more and uh, more are uh, choosing to do that to take advantage of them. Well, that's the minutiae of the, the fuel bills, but there's a, a massive global problem, with, as we've just seen from John's report there, climate change. You and David Cameron were on one of those sleds with the Huskies. Absolutely. That's all been completely abandoned, hasn't it? Absolutely not. If you look at the progress that we've made in the last three and a half years, we might not have been making Blair-like speeches about it. Before. And not yeah. returning to, to Greenland. No, you but and what Mr. we have Cameron. been doing is getting on with the hard work of delivery. So we've established the, world, the world's first green investment bank, £5 billion that's now being pumped into the British economy. When we came in, we had almost the lowest level of clean energy of any country in Europe. We're now well up the European League table. Over 15% of our energy comes from okay, renewables. But you've also and taken... our emissions are down. OK, but you've taken green levies off energy bills. You've slashed investment in onshore wind and solar energy. We have the world's largest offshore wind programme. And only yesterday, we had an announcement of a big investment of From Siemens. the private sector. Yeah, That's from not... the private sector. Fantastic. And what we're seeing is record levels of investment. Over so the government can billion. butt out and leave it to the private sector. No. No, it's a partnership, saying? but we're, what we're saying is private sector that's going to deliver. It's up to government to create the framework, and we are creating the conditions for investment to flourish. And that's what's happening. That's why we see emissions coming down, investment in green energy going up, but in a way that's affordable for consumers, whereas vote, Labour just vote for every well, level that's, that's going. Well, that's a con, isn't it? Because we heard from the SSE boss that you can't have lower energy bills and the renewables investment. Well, I, I mean, George Osborne said you can't save the planet by bankrupting Britain. It's a con. And he's absolutely right. You can't save the planet by bankrupting Britain. But, Cathy, when I cut the, set the uh, tariff for solar, you may remember there was a big outcry that I was killing the solar industry uh, two years ago when I slashed the payments we were making and reduced the cost to consumers of supporting solar energy. Since then, we've deployed nearly three gigawatts or, uh, of solar, put panels on nearly half a million homes. Actually, clean energy is thriving, but yeah, it has to pay its way, and we're determined to, to only, deliver for consumers. And only 883 households have the Green Deal package. Only 883, 883 houses have so far taken out a Green Deal finance, but over 150,000 homes have taken out a Green Deal assessment, and over 80% of those are installing measures. It's fantastic. Look at the delivery. It's really quite impressive. Greg Barker, thank you very much for joining me.